Hello and welcome to yet another Outworldly Experience! Today we'll be learning how to create a vehicle API or basically any system API which can communicate a DLL which can communicate from some other place inside your project folder. So just like the API that we have for RageMP, which is GTA Network API, today we'll be learning how to create our very own API. So first thing, we are going to create a new project. So let me close this, save whatever changes that I might have made. I'll reopen it and I'll make a new project. I'll select the class library .NET Core C Sharp, next. I'll name this Vehicle API and I'll save it in my RageMP server files. Let me find that first. RageMP, server files, bridge, resources, and right over here and create. Now we will load it, let it load, let it create the project in the background. Anywho, now that we are here, first thing what we need to do is we need to add the dependency. The dependency for the RAGE API or the GTA Network API, so which is bootstrapper.dll. So you need to cur um, find the correct directory for your bootstrapper, the one which is updated, the current version being 0.3.7. So this is my correct bootstrapper. I'll select it and then I'll add it. Once that it has been added, I'm going to use the packet. So using GTA Network API, that's it. I'm going to rename this class and call it, let's say, utils, mm, util. Rename the class. And now that we have a class, you know, instead of calling this util, I might just call it data. It fits more for it to be data than util. Now that we have our class, what we are going to do is we are going to add variables and functions for this class and a constructor as well. So first we are going to add variables. The variables that I will be using right now are a couple of them. You can adjust it according to your own need, according to your own server, how you're going to set it up. Just for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to use a very handful of variables. So first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a list of all the vehicles, the object vehicles that I have. So public. OK, I do not have a list. So using system generic. Where was it? System dot collection dot generic. OK, now I should have it list. And I'll call this data of oh, data and I'll name this as all vehicles is equals to new list that's about it I'll give a documentation contains all the user defined mm, vehicles from created from this class. Now that we have the list, we are going to add a couple more things like the name of the vehicle, the position, the rotation, color, number and dirt. So let's start with the name. Mm, public string name. That's it. Oh wait, getter and setter. So get set. Next we have position. For position, what I will do is I am going to make a private v, um, variable and then I'll make a public variable. And inside the public variable, I'll use a getter and setter to update the vehicle property. So first, let me give the documentation for this. Stores the display name for the vehicle. Now, a private, what was I going to do? Position, so vector3 and position. 
since this is private I'm neither going to give it a get property or a set property and then I am going to use a public vector tree position now the convention that I like to use is that if it is a private variable I like to give an underscroll before the variable name and I keep the variable name in all small letters if it is a public variable then I give a capital letter in the front mostly like a camel casing every first word needs to be capital and if it's a function well again camel casing but it sounds like a function let me give the documentation for this as well contains the position of the vehicle and updates the position as well in the in game so now for the public uh, variable that we have we are going to give a getter and setter function so get and set what ha what should happen if we use get well we will just extract the original value which is in our private variable so return this dot position oops my bad this dot position and in set what we are going to do is we are going to set the value inside our private variable so this the position is equals to value and we can add additional things like um, update the database using a function so every time if it is getting set you can update the database or you can actually you know change the position of the vehicle so what I will do is I will make another variable public this time what I will store the data type that I'll store is a type of vehicle so vehicle vehicle data mm, and it gets it contains the vehicle the predefined vehicle from the GTA network API what I'll do is that when an object is created in the constructor I'll make sure that the vehicle is set first so what I will do is this the vehicle data the position is equals to value that's it so over here I am setting the local variable and then also the variable for the vehicle object so that it gets the position gets updated in game the position actually changes here physically in game you can do any other sort of function that you like in the setter function same for the getter function but this is how I like to keep my function simple this is about it Right now, I won't make a function for updating data for the vehicle. This is for another video. For now, we are just concerned about how to make a class, an API, and how to use it. Now, we have the position set up. We will just add three more things, rotation, color one, and color two. I will use the same technique. I'll make a private variable and a public variable. The public variable will have a getter and setter for the private local variable. So just give me a moment. I'll pause and come back real quick. Okay, so now we are done with the rest of the variables that we needed. We have a private vector tree variable of rotation and a public vector tree rotation, which sets the private uh, member the same with color one a private of data type color the name identifier being underscore color one and a variable with capital c color one which has a getter and setter for the private variable underscore color one same with color two why am i doing this well so that i have total control over how the values are getting set in my private variable Let's say if I don't want the color to the value, let, okay, let's forget about color. Let's talk about something simple. Um, 
let's just take color instead. So if I want something, like if I the way my variables are set, I have total control. What do I mean by that? Let's say if I want some value not to be set, instead to throw an error of something. So what I can do is if value is equals to equals to null or anything at all, you can be the judge of what you want inside the condition. If value, hold a second, dot, uh, two string, anything, does not matter. Now, what I want is that it should throw an error. So what I'll do is throw new invalid operation exception and then well not operation it should be just exception exep exception and then i can throw in some sort of a string message that the string of the value cannot be null not necessarily this because this exception means nothing it is completely bogus but for the sake of this tutorial for the sake of you being able to understand the total control of this sort of a method is that you have total control. You can set whatever constraints you want. And that's why we have kept this variable as private and this as public. This is the main major reason why I like C sharp because it has a getter and setter local sort of a function thing. Anyway, so I'll just remove this part. Now we have an additional rotation vector three variable, color, color one variable, color, color two variable. Now we'll create some functions. A function, the first function that I'll create for this API is just a basic create vehicle. For starters, for this video right now, what we will do is when create variable is invoked from some other place, it will simply create a vehicle and assign all the variables, the values, which is passed, in the function to the object's members and nothing else. In a later video, when I'll talk about how to use query in a vehicle, vehicle entity, we can change the create vehicle in such a way so that when it is getting created, the vehicle, you are also inserting data in your database and you're retrieving the SQL ID or whatever primary key that you might have. So anyway, now let's begin with a uh, function. The function that I'm going to use is a static function, basically so that I don't have to create an object for me being able to create, uh, use the function. So public, static, and I'll keep it void. I don't want any return type and create vehicle, V-E-H-I-C-O-A, my bad. The arguments that I'm going to ask for, for this function is going to be vehicle hash. So u int v hash. For local variables, I like to keep the first letter small and no underscore before the name, the identifier. Okay, we have the hash. We need the position. So vector three position. Then we need the rotation. So I'll keep it float rotation then a color one and color two so int color one and color two oops now the good thing about creating your own api is that you can control however type of an argument that you want instead of let's say float rotation i could have made um, vector three rotation instead of int color one i can make a color color one the data type color and color color two. If I want, let's say, a constructor, I'm sorry, a function overload, basically a function overload is something that the function has the same name, but it has different arguments. So instead of basically having vector three or color, if I want int, so I'll do public void, so oops, static, void, create vehicle, and I'll give u int v hash, Instead of, I uh, know, I only need vector three for position. Instead of vector three rotation, I'll take float rotation. Instead of color, color one, I'll take int color one. Instead of color, color two, I'll take int color two. 
for now I'm not going to focus oops spelling mistake for now I'm not going to focus in for this function the overloaded function I'm going to focus in this so what I'll do is I will create a vehicle in this function and assign all the values in this but before we actually create an object it is necessary that you have a constructor for that class so that when you create an object some default values are given to the variables so let me create a constructor and I'll tell you explain it to you what it basically means give me a moment 